Thank you. So we're just getting the slides up, are we? Ah, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so we're not quite the last presentation of the... Uh, sorry, this is the last presentation of the day, so please, no one else, leave. Uh, um, okay, so I wanted to talk about the Victorian Doctors' Health Program and what we, where do we come from, uh, what are we and where are we going? And um, I think that um, uh, it's a, um, this, this picture sums it up nicely. Here's um, Paul Gauguin in Tahiti in a tropical paradise um, sitting around um, painting this beautiful um, scenario of everything that's around and there he is in the corner very morose and depressed. And it, um, we, pick, we miss that. We miss the fact that our colleagues are starting to become um, withdrawn and having problems and we need to try and start the conversation to tap them on the shoulder to get them going. So, uh, as I say, I'm Dr Tim Dewhurst. I've been with the Victorian Doctors' Health Program for the last um, uh, year and a bit. I'm actually a country GP and I was out at Casterton uh, for four years and um, a few, um, some years ago. And uh, so know what the um, uh, situation is in country general practice. Um, I don't want this to be a monologue. Please yell out if there's anything that you want to discuss or talk about. And uh, I think that uh, if we can sort of try and get a bit of engagement, it will be helpful. Um, this is our office. It's a new office. We've now moved under the... Um, AMA um, um, house in Royal Parade. Um, it's affectionately called the Dungeon if you ever log into our uh, Wi-Fi. Um, there's our team down there of the people who um, uh, work in the program. And uh, we're a free, confidential and non-judgmental service that is actually separate from APRA that funds us and the um, hospital system and the, uh, the Department of Health also helps fund us. We are not attached to the AMA, we are not attached to APRA. Anything you say to us is, um, is for you. And we're there to support people who have some, um, who may have any difficulties or problems and I'll come back to that. We're available 24 hours um, a, uh, by phone. Um, we offer a face-to-face -face service, which I think is important because it means that you get a chance to come and actually have a chat to us and have a chat to a colleague um, about what might be going on. We do offer telemedicine. We do hope to see you in face-to-face -face first. And it's open to all doctors and medical students um, in Tasmania and uh, Victoria um, and uh, the nurses also have a similar program. We're also working um, in moving more and more into rural Victoria and um, into trying to work also in Aboriginal health. If there's anyone who's involved in Aboriginal health, please let me know latest because we need to try and get some more networks going there too. Uh, we offer a triage and a clinical assessment. We don't offer usually ongoing treatment. Um, we're a support service for the transition between um, often when people are, may have some problems until they can be referred and get more definitive care. Uh, we have a, refer a panel of GPs and specialists that we refer to and we provide education, especially docs for docs training. So if there's any doctors here who see other doctors, we're trying to get you together and I'll come back in a, um, two or three months time and run it training program that we normally run to be able to try and uh, provide a support for that service and so that we also know who we can refer to. We run a, a case management and um, group for doctors who have been in our service for a while who might have um, mental health or addiction problems. Um, the peer support program is um, uh, not this person here. Um, the peer support is run by the AMA, um, but it's actually open to all doctors, but it's anonymous. When you talk to us, 
you end up um, usually letting us know who you are, although we don't use Medicare, it's a free service so that no um, information is retained that's uh, accessible by uh, Medicare. Um, yes, there's the doctor getting help. And we have problems because doctors have a real problem with denial. And it's not just a river in Egypt. Um, we still have stigma to mental health. You know, you wouldn't have thought that we, now most of us are quite happy working in mental health with other people, but we also are feared, fear of being judged, and especially through mandatory reporting. And so that with re the problem with the uh, mandatory reporting is that everybody's worried that the slightest behavioural change will be reported. I spoke on Thursday night to the chair of the Medical Board of Australia who assured me that what they're looking at is substantial risk to the public. By the time you come to us, if there's a substantial risk to the public, it'll become obvious to you, obvious to me, and we'll be able to try and find the best way around it. Rarely do we report, we've only had to report two people in 10 years, but, um, it's the task is to try and get people to come and see us. Ego gets in the way. We get very bad habits. Trying to become the patient is really tricky as a doctor. Access and time and distance, especially in um, Victoria. And we're trying to get out to different places. We've already been out to um, Warrnambool um, we go, and, and Bendigo and uh, Albury and uh, we're trying to get into these other sectors as well, just to spread the good word. I thought if we've got a few minutes that we could talk about stress and burnout, because stress and burnout is probably a big problem more than what we know. We sort of are so used to th the defining anxiety, depression as being the um, main mental health problems that we have. But uh, when it comes down to doctors, um, stress and burnout is an important issue and um, because it's not, it's, it, it's part of the, what we used to call a reactive depression and we know there's a continuum between the reactive and what we used to call the endogenous and major depressions. But stress and burnout are very important factors when it comes to us. What do we know about stress? We know it's necessary for growth. We know it's accumulative. And if you don't deal with it, it can sit for many years. We know that a little bit of stress, as I said, is good, but it comes to a peak where it starts to be downhill and we've got to watch that. We know that there are internal causes, but there is also external causes and traumatic causes. And uh, doctors experience trauma um, sometimes very bad trauma and we just sort of shrug it off thinking it's not important. But the stages of uh, burnout are terribly um, obvious to us and we're not as good at picking them up as what we would think. Why? Because the first part of um, burnout is being enthusiastic and taking on too much work. So that's what happens when we start a new job. We then start to neglect ourselves, dismiss problems, focus on work until we become cranky, irritable, and our receptionist taps you on your shoulder and says, Tim, I think you need to take time off. I've organised for you to go away with your wife next weekend. Very important. Make, and um, the, if you've got somebody who knows you, who can actually rescue you before you get to a stage of getting too burnt out, you can actually reverse this process for, at this point. But if you keep it going, it ends up into being withdrawing socially or changing things, doing things which might be more unusual. Our family and friends become concerned, <laughs> organise an intervention. Um, we start, being, start doing the um, admissions at 3 p.m. like we used to do them at 3 a.m. as being a zombie. But then if we let it go, we start becoming quite empty, lost and exhausted. Um, before something physical might happen. I ended up with a pacemaker before being taken out of uh, practice at one stage. Um, but we have to learn to help ourselves. 
have your own GP. Has everyone got a GP here? Is there one person who needs to find it? If you ring us um, during the week, we actually have a list of GPs you can see. But it's very important that everybody have their own GP. I also think it's very important that everybody have their own supervisor, mentor or coach. The allied health work, uh, workers and um, psychologists and um, psychiatrists usually have their own mentors. But we don't. And I think it's terribly important we find a way of being able to develop a better system for that. Some people find that mindfulness, yoga and relaxation are terribly helpful. It's not for everybody, but it is really good for some. Um, Schwartz rounds can be, uh, and balance groups can be very good if you prefer the groups to sit down and discuss emotional issues. But to me, the whole idea of the, the balance groups or the mental groups is so that you can actually air and debrief some of the emotional issues that may accumulate that we're not, we forget about. Call someone who cares. Don't just grumble to your um, uh, nurse at work or uh, your wife when she's doing something else. You need to sit down and sort of discuss what's going on. And sometimes we all need some professional help. But we need to get a life. We need to learn to listen to ourselves. Exercise and diet, I came in the end of the last talk and we heard very much about how important exercise and diet is. We need to make sure we get enough sleep and sleep can sometimes be the best hallmark of problems if, something, if we're having troubles. Minimise those little helpers. Um, this day and age, probably the little helpers are little Shiraz or Chardonnay, uh, might even be coffee. But doesn't, we, can, we can get by with a little bit, but don't rely on that as being our way of being able to survive. I think we need to learn to create something make something with our hands and um, not just have a recreation where we're doing exercise which is terribly important but I think we also need to be creative love the knitting I think that that's um, um, something we should all do I, I hear that there's some uh, uh, guys starting to do more of that now too but uh, um, we need to be doing something we need real holidays don't just go to the conference in Rome and call that a holiday if you want a holiday, go to Rome. If you want to go to a conference, come here. But don't call this a holiday. Surround yourself with family and people who know you. Now, the most important thing is that what we've talked about so much has been the general advice that we give everybody. But the problem is we don't know what works for you. You need to ask who you are. Doctor's health is personal. It's not something that you can just group together and tell everybody should do this or everybody should do that. And the, the most important thing is to try and find out what sort of person you are so you can get the help that you need. I sort of think that there are three main questions. What stresses you out the most? What are the warning signs that you're starting to tip over the edge? I think everybody starts to know what they are. And what do you do to play, relax and play? Maybe you don't do enough. But um, so that uh, the stress, some people find that it's to do with overwork, expectations, um, failure, um, someone criticising their um, um, behaviour or problems. Um, someone um, g g having deadlines. What are the warning signs? Maybe the warning signs are sleep. Maybe the fact that you're, you're not good enough and you have an imposter syndrome starting to build up inside of you. Maybe you have the opposite and you just charge full forth, force thinking, I can make it to my holidays in three weeks' time. If I only I just keep pushing myself, I'll be right. Some people get impatient, some people worry. But there are many things we can do to um, relax. Some people find sport, woodwork, gym, movies, music, coffee, garden, cooking, reading, bush from a list of 
that people gave me at a previous presentation. So what can we do? We can provide a safety net for those who fall through the gaps. We manage the referrals to APRA. If you know anyone who's ever been referred to APRA, you know that it's terribly stressful. 80% of people doesn't go, it doesn't go any further, but those 80% seem to suffer very badly, and it's very important to make sure that they get some help and have somebody to talk to too. Please send them to us. If they are reported to APRA and have a problem, all the more reason why it's good to actually have somebody to talk to. We are not APRA. We don't help with the APRA referral. We help you if you've been referred to APRA. Stress and burnout that I started to br talk about briefly is one of the things that we focus on. And if, if I come back and spend longer about that, um, we will um, we'll talk more. Um, we provide advocacy, especially for return to work. And sometimes we're just, just a first port of call. And I want to put in a plug for our doctors in doctors training. As I said, we'll be coming back in a few months' time and uh, we need to be able to try and get as many people together as we can. So um, uh, watch this space. Call us if you would like to find out more about it. From you, you people, we would like us to keep that focus on what's important in doctor's health. Please promote VDHP for anyone that you know might have a problem or for yourself if you just want to come and talk to somebody. And we've got a needs assessment on our website um, our website, uh, I think everybody knows these days, the easiest way of finding a website is typing in VDHP into the um, Google and you'll come up with our phone number and our website. And if you, uh, our website is vdhp.org.au. Very easy. But um, we have the needs assessment on that um, where we just have a very brief um, two minute uh, questionnaire about what it is that you want from us and how can we help. Um, so that's our phone number. As I said, you just type in VDHP sometimes. It's just as important. Um, don't, uh, don't forget our, the peer support uh, program, which is closely aligned with us. The uh, Lifeline, if you need to talk to somebody straight away, or Triple O. And Beyond Blue and Black Dog have some tremendous um, information um, uh, online, as does RACGP, I understand, and MEGA do, as well as some of the other MDOs. Now, I've unfortunately gone over time and had to rush through everything, but has anyone got any questions, or are you just wanting to go down the other room and have a little helper. Yes? Um, I think we're more aware of it and um, I think that uh, we've, we've um, buried it so I, I, I would have said it's the same. Yeah. We're getting busier though. <laughs> Sorry. I, th I think there is. I think there's a whole lot more complexities. I haven't, didn't put that slide in, and um, that's why we're trying to get more out into the uh, rural networks and try and provide more support. Whereabouts are you in the Mallee? I'm near Swan Hill. Whereabouts? Near Swan Hill. Whereabouts? Oh, I, well, I live on the farm. I'm north of Birchett, south of Sea Lake. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I was at Kerrang. Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, an hour from Kerrang. Um, up in our area, which is basically northwest Victoria, we're under doctored, we're also understaffed in terms of allied health, and a lot of funding has been taken away from all of our allied health as well. So we do have God a bless loving heart. particularly big problem in the sense of actually accessing Absolutely. Our services. Yes. Um, and I look down here and, and there's, I don't know how, where all these people come from, but uh, you're very, very populated down here with your doctors. Yes. So um, You're north of the divide. I know, and, I'm well and, aware of that. And, and there's a flood of doctors coming through and they find it very hard to get over that brick wall too, mm. which is really sad. Mm. 
and then we're losing the doctors who are providing the um, support and supervision, so it's hard to get new doctors to get support and supervision into those areas. So, um, if you'd, and uh, unfortunately, the, what they're doing is sending people who've got the least amount of training and experience into the places which probably need you the most. We're trying to get out there, and we'd like to find out more about that, please. You're a responsive group, thank you. Thank you.